block size locally, right, so that we have different size grid sizes. And one reason that we might want to do this One obvious reason so let's just say that in this grid block here, and again, my drawing's not very good, but those are meant to be all the same delta x, okay let me fix that a little better. So if I stick a well in that grid block, and then inject fluid into that grid block, if I draw the pressure as a function of space from that well going away, and let's say it's a tight formation, so the permeability is quite low. What would you expect? What would you expect the pressure distribution in a tight formation to be, going from a well where you're injecting fluid away from it? You what? Yeah, fast. So, so it's not going to be like a straight line. So, just qualitative. I mean, all I'm asking for is something qualitative here, right? So. It's going to go maybe something like this, right? Where the constant pressure out there at the end is just the, the pressure in the reservoir. So, if I solve if I solve these equations with constant grid block size and the grid block size is coarse, like I've drawn it, large. Remember. We solve for those points in the center, but it's, it's like the saying, I mean, what we're doing is we're saying that the pressure is constant in that grid block because all the, all the permeability, everything else is constant. So while we solve them at the points, we're, we're, we're saying that the, the pressure associated with that point is constant throughout that whole block that we've drawn. Right? So if I were to solve this equation, the best I could do, the best approximation I could have, and if I were to solve this with my coarse grid, the best approximation I would have would be something like this. Right? So that black line is what we'd anticipate the, the real solution, the analytic solution look like. And with my coarse grid, those blue lines are what I get. And even if we did some post processing, right? Even if we said, you know, afterwards that, well, okay. We're going to linear interpolate. We're going to draw a line through the centers of all those. Two. So we'd have something like this. If this is the center, center, center. So is my blue line, does my blue line represent the black line very well? Not really. Right? So something better, something we might do that's better is we might use a more refined grid near the well and then coarsen up away from the well. So if I use a re more refined grid near the well, now I could have something like this maybe. And now if I post, do some post-processing, say I draw a line through the centers. It's better, right? I can do better. It's not perfect, but I can do better. So this, this would be a motivation to use varying grid block size. Because, you know, far away from the well, in the, in the last grid block I've drawn over there, if the pressure is constant, that's a good approximation of the reservoir pressure, right? I don't need a lot of resolution out there. So away from areas that you have, I mean, in areas where you don't have steep gradients, it's okay to use 
larger grid blocks up. But in areas that are going to have steep gradients, near wells, near fractures, faults, stuff like that, then you need a lot of resolution, you need a lot of grid blocks to be able to capture the steep gradients and the pressure. Okay. Now it turns out we have another way to handle wells called well models, and we'll talk about those later in the class when we do 2D. But you know, for now, this is you know, without knowing about well models, this is the tool you have. Local local grid refine. Okay. So again, in this case, if this is I and this is I plus one, we have that delta X I is not equal to delta X I plus one. So in this scenario, we write our inner block transmissibility. And we're going to keep the effects, or we're going to include the effects of varying permeability. And so now we have this new delta x i plus a half, which is the geometric mean or the average and when you plug that in so if we were to go back over here if we were to go back over here and now now we carry out the same process that we did here where we write it over the half grid blocks it's just now our delta x's aren't constant our delta x's are associated with they're also they're associated with the half grid blocks, right? Or the, the, not necessarily the half, but the partial grid blocks. Then if you were to carry out all the algebra, what you'd get is that K I plus a half Which equals So that, that's it. I mean, for, for varying delta x, you would just assign your inner block transmissibility to have value k i plus a half equal to this, where those are your grid block sizes from i and i plus 1, and those are your permeabilities from i and i plus 1. And then the delta x i plus 1 is just the geometric average. So we could also have 